thank you for your presence. We fix our eyes on you, Father. You are worthy to be praised tonight. You are welcome in this place tonight. We turn our affection to you, my Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father, for every person in this place, every person watching online that you have an appointment tonight. That tonight, I declare, you will have an encounter with the living God. You are a holy Father. Tonight, boldly we enter. Boldly we come in. Thank you that we get to come as we are. What a mighty God we serve. We thank you for your faithfulness, Father. That even when we were alone, when we were broken, when we were beaten up, when we were in darkness, you were faithful when we were unfaithful. And you have transferred us into a kingdom of light. Now we get to be children of a loving God and we get to say, Abba. We get to say, Father. Father, I pray every person in this place, will you mock us tonight with your presence? Will you mock us tonight with your presence? It is my prayer tonight. Would you mark us with your holy presence tonight? We pray, Father, in that name that's above every other name. In that precious name, in that wonderful name, that name that is worthy. We worship you, Father. Are you ready? I'm ready. Point number one, before I go there. I've got a beautiful wife and a beautiful son, Mikhail, and a beautiful daughter, Tatum. Now, they cannot make it this time. And the last while, I've really been spending time with them as a family. Like, we just felt, take some time off. Just enjoy family. And uh, I just left home. And I'm homesick already. I'm so homesick. I don't know what's going on with me. I really miss my family. The other day we're driving in the car. And little Tatum, she's sitting in the back seat. And we're just talking. And I'm saying to my wife about a situation. I say, that is a stupid situation. And my daughter, she looks at me. Daddy, you cannot say that word stupid. We cannot say that to anyone. She says, but we can only say it to the devil. She says, can I say it to him? I say, you can do what you want to do. She says, the devil is stupid. She says, the devil is defeated. She said, the devil is small. So I look into the mirror. I say, well, why do you want to talk about the devil? She said, yeah, let's speak about Jesus. She says, Jesus is everywhere. She says, Jesus is everywhere. She says, even in East London. So Jesus is even in East London. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the other day, we, as we enjoying a little bit of holiday, we went to the beach. And uh, I've got some sunburn because I overstended my welcome on the beach. So I'm not a guy, if you don't know me, you probably don't know this, but I don't use cream. I don't like cream. I don't like cream on my hands. So I never use cream. So that evening, when you have sunburn, you realize there's a moment. When you get into that shower, you realize, oh, something happened. You feel a different heat upon you. So after the shower, I realized, yo, but my skin is dry. I had sunburn. So I maybe need some cream. So I start to open cupboards. Because I, I, I'm not sure how the cream bottle looks, but I have more or less an idea. So I get to this one cupboard, and there's a name, Nivea. So this might be it. 
So I pick it up and I start reading, and it says on the bottle, it says body lotion. It says lotion firming the body. The moment I picked up that bottle and I read that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Hey, body lotion firming the body. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, there will be a formula released because the body is dry. The body needs to be firm. But then there's another thing that says plus vitamin C. So I read vitamin C. Do you know what vitamin C does? Makes you glow. So I read vitamin C. Heard the Holy Spirit say, this year there will come an explosion to the church. An explosion of creativity. He says, my church will glow like never before. There's a formula that's coming through the Holy Spirit that will come on my people that they will glow. There will be a creativity and expression like never before. And then at the bottom of this little bottle, it says, visibly firmer skin. Visibly. Visible. The church is going to become visible like never before. And then it said one more thing. This is my word for the year. It said improved elasticity. Elasticity, stretchiness, improve. Movement, stretching. You know I like the word movement. The church is going to move this year. So if you want to see the year of more, I'm telling you the year of more and more and more is here, but I want to communicate something. If you ask for the more, there's a place that when you receive the more, the more can change you. And I need to say this before we go deeper, before we lay hands, before we see a move of God, because it's coming. But I found myself as a young man, I found myself in a position where I realized maybe there's an area of my heart where I have fallen more in love with the assignment than the one who has given the assignment. And I want to lay this down quickly for you. Three things. I sat there today praying. I felt the Lord spoke to me. Point number one. The end of last year, as I was preaching in Holland, I was busy preaching a powerful message. It started to flow. I was in my zone. Someone say hallelujah. I said I was in my zone. And for a moment I was busy and I was going for this thing. But for a moment it felt like I stepped out of grace. It almost felt like I stepped into my own grace there for a moment. And I heard the words the Lord spoke to me. He said, Werner, don't become professional. You see, there's a place where when the more starts to come, the more can change you. The more can break you. When the more come, you can become big in yourself. You can become so big in yourself that the more will crush you. Become big in Him. Then He carries the load. And I need to release this message. As I preach this message, I realize I'm not just preaching to you tonight. I'm preaching just as loud to myself. He spoke so clearly to me today. He said, Lord, give me a fresh message. And I want to pick up, don't become professional, point number one. Ephesians chapter number two, verse eight. I'm going to quickly go there. Are you still okay? Hallelujah. Verse number eight, for by grace you have been saved. Do you see there, by grace. By His grace you have been saved. 
Don't step out of the place of not being dependent on the one who is releasing the grace upon you. The Bible says, blessed are those who are dependent on Him. Don't lose your dependency. Don't get to the place where you say, I have arrived. Stay connected to the grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a free gift. It's not something you've earned. Verse number nine. Not of works, let anyone should boast. You know, there's a scripture in Psalms, now in Proverbs, I read it the other day. It says, don't consume too much honey. Then it says, for a person that is seeking his own glory is not glory. It is not glory. Now watch what verse number 10 says. It says, for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Two things there. Works and walk. Works and walk. Works and walk. Not lazy and sit. Lazy and sit. Works and work. But he says, for we are his workmanship. You know what that mean, workmanship means? I just quickly went on Google today. It says, when someone skillfully has put something together and created some sort of a product or something for a purpose of a job being done. It's to get the job done. So in other words, we are his workmanship. So what he says here is we are created by him skillfully. And now he has placed this image inside of us. And now he says, I have prepared good works for you so that you can walk in it. Beforehand, so that we can carry his glory, so that his glory can be revealed on this earth. I want to encourage you, don't become professional. Stay dependent. Don't lose your dependency. Stay connected to His grace. Hey. Number two. Don't lose your intimacy. I was confronted with a question. The end of last year preaching in my zone. I heard the Holy Spirit say, what do you love more? Preaching or my presence? That question hit me so hard in that moment that I knew if I answer this question, the answer that will come out of my mouth might not be the right answer. I was even scared to answer the question. Because if I was real with myself, what do I love more, preaching or His presence? I got fearful in that moment. Like I cannot be honest with myself. What do you love more? And I want to pick this up. The Lord showed me today so beautiful in Acts chapter number 4. This is Peter and John. Hey, I love these two guys. Watch what happens here. Verse number one. Now, as they spoke, they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Being greatly disrupted. They became greatly disturbed by Peter and John. My question to you, are you bringing disruption? 
these two men were ordinary men. They started to preach the gospel to such a place where they brought disruption. Is your life disrupting things? Because when he said, go and preach the gospel to the ends of his earth, what he was saying is, go and preach. Go into the systems and disrupt Being greatly disturbed that they taught the people preaching in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Now these guys, the Sadducees of this group of people, they came to Peter and John and they laid hands on them. We're supposed to do the laying on of hands. Verse number three, and they laid hands on them and they put them in custody. Until the next day. Some of you, the enemy have laid hands on you. He has arrested your passion. He has maybe arrested your dreams. He has maybe arrested the drive about, uh, behind what and why you are doing things. And he has laid hands, but it's time we lay hands. It's time we lay the hands. We lay hands on the sick. We are the ones bringing disruption. Now watch what happens here. I love this. However, verse number four, many of those who heard the word believed. Number one, you have to preach the word. They have to hear it. Faith comes by hearing. How beautiful is the feet of those who bring the good news. We got to preach the good news. We got to make the main thing the main thing, the gospel. The death, the resurrection, and the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus. The main thing, the main thing. And a number of men came to be about 5,000. So as they preached and people heard and they believed, 5,000 came in. Fruit came in. Preached the gospel. Now they gathered, verse number 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked Peter and John, watch this. By what power? Or by what name have you done this? They challenged them. Peter and John, because they were preaching in that name, brought such a disruption that they had to ask, in what name did you do this? How did you do this? Such a disruption, they challenging them, please tell us, in what name are you doing this? We need to know. Then Peter, watch this, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well? Verse number 10, let it be known. The intention is revealed right here. The motive of what they were doing there is revealed in this moment. He says, let it be known. Let it be known to you all. And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. The intention of the heart was revealed right here. May this be known. May your life disrupt people, disrupt systems in such a way where it starts to push back and say, how are you doing this? How is it possible? By what name are you doing this thing? And then your response of your heart must be, not your followers on Instagram. It must be, let it be known. Let it be known that by one name, the name above it all, by that name, this is how I'm standing here. This is what's holding me together. This is the grace that I am dependent on, not my own grace. It's not my kingdom, but His kingdom. Some of you say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Say, I cannot fill you. You're too full of yourself.
We need to lay this foundation. What is the motive of your heart? What is the driving source? I had to ask myself these questions over the last two months. I thank God for a, a wife that is sharp and direct. I cannot get away with certain things. <laughs> thank God for them. Now watch this. Verse 11, this is the stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Verse number 12, nor is there salvation in any other name. This is the gospel. For there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the gospel. Verse number 13. Now when they saw the, the boldness, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that these two men were uneducated and untrained, when they perceived, when they realized, when they saw these two men were uneducated, there was nothing special about them. The Bible says they marveled. They did not marvel because of their professionalism. They marveled and realized that they have been with Jesus. When we look at your life, They need to marvel because they need to know. They need to see. They need to experience. They need to taste. Because you've been with Jesus. This, maybe I'm just preaching for myself here. Verse number 14, are you with me? Are you still okay? Verse number 14, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. When you stand for Jesus, when He's everything and you've been with Him, dependent on Him, and He's your motive, and you make Him known, you make Him famous, signs and wonders will flow through your life, and people by seeing, there's evidence. There's evidence. Number 15, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Verse number 16, saying, what shall we do with these men? In other words, they became a problem. Be so full of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that you become a problem. That you don't fit into the systems. You don't fit into the molds. You don't fit into the little box they're trying to put you in. Because you're full of the Holy Ghost and fire. You cannot help yourself to make Him known. For indeed, that is a noble miracle. Has been done through men is evident. This miracle that's been done through these men are evident. Evidence. Everyone say evidence. Verse number 17. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them. The enemy only wants to threaten. The Bible says you've not received the spirit of fear. Paul is speaking to Timothy. He says, but you've received power, love, and a sound mind. That fear is intimidation. The enemy is trying to intimidate you to shut you up. Threatening. It's the only thing he can do is threaten, intimidate. That from now on they don't speak about this man in this name. It's in verse 18, so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach the name of Jesus. I want to show you the response. Verse number 19, the word of God excites me. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more to God, you judge. In other words, what he was saying is, hey, sir, 
put yourself in my shoes. And if God speaks to you and I speak to you, who are you going to listen to? In other words, rhetorical question. I'm not listening. I'm listening to my God. No familiar spirit. I'm listening to the voice of my Father. Because He says, my sheep. Hallelujah. For we cannot but speak. Watch this, verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The Amplified said, but we cannot help telling the people. We cannot help telling people of what we have seen and what we have heard and what he has done. We have a testimony. You're sitting with a story. You have a testimony inside of you. When you release that testimony, it is someone else's breakthrough. It is their introduction into the kingdom of God. When you share your testimony, it is an invitation for them to come out of their situation and be transferred into that glorious kingdom of light. You turned into a preacher, evangelist, by just sharing your testimony. You've got a testimony. Verse number 21. So when <laughs> they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishment. Because of the people, since they all glorify God for what has been done. In other words, they had to let them go. They couldn't lay hands on them anymore. They said, well, we don't know what to do with you. Become such a big problem. Become such a person that brings such a level of disruption that they say, we don't know what to do with you. Can you just go? <laughs> don't lose your intimacy. They recognized that they have been with Jesus. <laughs> they recognized. I had to shake things up in my life. What does it help? You encounter me and you walk away with me. When you encounter me, you have to walk away with Jesus. But number three, don't lose your first love. Drink from your first wells. The first well is the place where you got introduced and you received salvation. That is your first well. In other words, don't lose your innocence. When you are innocent, you are hungry. When you are innocent, you won't miss any service. When you are innocent, it doesn't matter who's shouting. It doesn't matter what's going on. You are hungry for Him. I remember the first wells. When we were preaching, where there were people, a move of God happening in the township. That there were people, the township, the building was so full. They started to break the building because God was in there and they had to come in. They were hungry for Him. They were hungry for a living God because they saw something. I am encouraging you and I'm challenging you and I'm provoking you. Don't lose the innocence. Don't lose the wonder. I found myself and I'm just being real. I love being real. I found myself in a place where I was preaching as a man. Preaching, I would come from the platform. I would cry for hours. I would lay there and say, this is what God did. My wife, did you see how that lady encountered him? Did you see that leg grew? Did you see how he came in? Did you feel what I felt? And I stepped into a place where I walked off the platform. And the only question I could ask was, was I good enough? 
did I preach good enough? And I realized for a moment, I was dependent on my own righteousness. I started to become professional. I started to put a pressure upon myself to perform a certain way instead of being Werner. I want to be real with you because I know this is going to help someone. I need to preach the gospel where Jesus is not just the center. He's everything. So what we do is we say, I'm going to do A, B, and C. God, will you bless it? Where you actually just have to be filled with Him. And then it overflows. And then it happens from that place. But we want Him to bless our stuff. Our ideas. Don't lose your first love. Be a lover of Jesus. I'm going to read this to you. Ephesians chapter number 3 verse 14. Somebody asked me one day, oh, you're going to preach about the love of Jesus again. Is it all you can preach about? That moment it came, I took it wrong. And I wanted to become professional. I wanted to, to bring a new message. As I went deeper into my secret place, I said, Werner, I need you to preach about my love. Ephesians chapter number 3 verse 14. This is Paul. He says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's saying here, for this reason, it's an important reason. It's so important that he's going down on his knees for your sake, not for his sake. He says, from whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named. We are part of a family. He has given us a name. Now watch what he says. Verse number 16. That he would grant you. That he would release to you. That he would give to you. This matter is so important that he goes on his knees and say, Lord, grant this to them. Give this to them. Show this to them. He says, according to your riches, to his riches and his glory. Not our own. It's something that comes from him. His riches, his glory. Watch what he says. So that we might be strengthened with might. Through the Holy Spirit in our innermost being. The Amplified said, strengthened and reinforced. There are reinforcements coming to your life. You need reinforcements for this year. He says, with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit indwelling your innermost being. And... Your personality. God wants to fill you up in such a way with himself because you are a carrier. That when his spirit comes upon you, everything inside of you, your personality has to come forward. In other words, you have to become comfortable in who you are. When you are real, that very image by the Holy Spirit that comes upon you has to be revealed because the world is waiting for the sons. That creativity of your personality, it has to come out. People say you're making a show. You're making an act. You're running up and down. It is my personality that comes out when the power comes. I cannot help myself but to tell. I cannot help but to turn. I cannot help but to jump. I get excited. And this is the way the Lord has made me to express. And if you have a problem with me making a show, I'll make a show till he shows up and then he will show off. 
No longer are we going to be boring, sit down, lukewarm, dry, sisty Christians. We're going to be loud, extravagant, visible, experienced. Why are people just sitting here? Your personality, the way you dance, the way you sing, the way you act. You have to be released. The fear of man has come and gripped your life. The religious spirit has made you very holy. So holy that you cannot move anything. You're just holy the whole time. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Yay. <laughs> hey. Oh. Your personality. Yeah, but you're not singing the way they sing. I need to sing how I sing. By the way, I'm not singing for you. By the way, I'm not dancing for you. By the way, it was not you that called me in the first place. By the way, he qualified me. I didn't qualify myself. He called me. He chose me. He anointed me. So I'm going to dance for him. So I'm going to sing for him. So I'm going to shout for him. So I'm going to run for him. So I'm going to express for him. And if your little religious spirit cannot handle it, let me just step on it for a moment. Let me just work that little thing. Just give me a blunt knife so I can kill that holy cow. Because we are in a church that is alive and vibrant. An expression of heaven is coming. Not lukewarm dead. This is not a funeral service. There is one that died. But then, on the third day he rose. And when he rose, something was released. And something was imparted. And something was given. That's personality. Then I walk in His walk. Then the confidence is His confidence. Then the boldness, it comes heavier. Oh, the confidence. Hey, who's that man? He doesn't look so skillful. He doesn't look trained. What is it about him? And they marveled. Because they recognized that he was with Jesus. There's a different walk. If you understand that walk, I almost want to ask you, I need you to walk like that. But I've got my different walk. This walk I didn't learn on the streets. It's a walk of confidence. It's a walk of being in love. I need to finish the scripture. So why do we need to be strengthened? Why do we need to receive power? Why is Paul saying granted to them? Why is this matter so important? <laughs> Verse number 17. That Christ may dwell, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted. Everyone say rooted. And grounded. In love. That we may be rooted. And grounded. In love. Verse number 18. May. Be able to 
comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height of His love. He's saying, grant to them, give them power according to your riches, according to your glory. Strengthen them, Holy Spirit. Give them capacity, Holy Spirit. Empower them that they may stay rooted, that they may stay grounded, that they can just comprehend how big, how wide, how, why? Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can think, according to the power that works in us, to Him be the glory in the church of Jesus Christ to all generations. If love is not your foundation, if you're not rooted in love, you're not going to see the exceedingly, abundantly, far above. On the way to the airport, I got my Uber driver. And as I was sitting there, I was quite busy. I had to do some stuff. The Holy Spirit asked me a question. Do you love this man? He said, for if you don't love this man, don't ever get on a platform. I'm running in Holland. I'm laying hands on someone. Busy preaching. The fire of God comes into the place. I give him a word. I hear the Holy Spirit say, do you even love the man you gave a word for? If you don't have the love, you are a clashing symbol. You can bolt all these great things. You can go for all these great things. You can have nice platforms. Or not. If you don't have the love, you become professional. When you become professional, you lose the innocence. When you lose the innocence, you have to rely more on your own gift that has been given. Because your gift is without repentance. But somewhere along the line, your gift is pushing. Your gift is working hard. Because now you have to compensate because you've lost the innocence. And then you get to a place where you feel pressure because your gift is not good enough. Your gift is not the glory. Your gift is not His presence. It is not your gift that breaks the yoke. We have to be marked with His presence. We have to be carriers of Jesus. We have to enter territories and the atmosphere responds, not because you become professional, but because you carry something that all hell recognizes the aroma when you walk into that room. Am I speaking to someone? I know this is a different word I'm bringing, but this is the first day. Let's give the foundation. Because he's going to ask you, hey, you've done great things, but do I know you? Your works are going to burn in a fire. It's going to be tested. That innocence, any miracle, The places where we were so excited. Any any meeting is a meeting where God moves. It's maybe a Christmas carol and the choir is on stage. And there's a, a lady from the church around the corner and she's sitting in the building coming to listen to the choir. But we're so in love with Jesus that the choir is starting to fall under the power of God. Any moment, any meeting, it's not about entertaining people. We don't do meetings because of what people want. We do meetings because we want to see him move. In Holland, there's a man. (laughs) We're preaching and this old man stands up. He starts to shake and tremble in the presence. He's almost 90 years old. And all of a sudden, you just see false teeth. And all the ushers are standing there. And we just see false thief looking. And no one is serving. Everyone is looking at the thief. We don't know what to do. But his presence is in the building. Just see false thief. (laughs) 
be rooted and grounded. The Lord is creating new wine skins because He wants to pour out new wine. But many has left the wine and drank the vinegar. I want to encourage you when you start to compete, when you start to quarrel, when you start to gossip, you've had some vinegar. Get out of that stuff. It's not your kingdom, it's His kingdom. Let's be people that are pure, holy, blameless. I want to be madly in love with Him. And I realized when I went back to my secret place, He was just waiting there for me. He was just waiting for me to come and smile again and make my jokes, just to be funny, just to walk the way I walk. He was just waiting there for me to just step in. And when I started to just read a scripture, I read a scripture without preparing a sermon. As I read a scripture, it jumps up. I'm so excited in that moment, I run out of the house, ask my wife. I run up and down. Can you believe what that scripture is saying? It's hitting so deep and so hard because I'm spending time with Him. It is the anointing. It's the Holy Spirit that makes it come alive. The Holy Spirit is responsible for many things. He's the one that gave breath to the beginning. The Holy Spirit is the one that gave songs to David. Every victory that David had was because of the anointing. There's something about the anointing. Not the gift, the anointing. That how is it possible that a little boy can take a slingshot and a, a, a little stone and shoot it into a giant skull that his brain explodes. How is it possible? It is the anointing. It's the same anointing when Samuel, he got that jawbone and he killed a thousand people. It's the anointing. There's something about the anointing when it comes upon you. Look at Moses. He had a, st a, st a, st a, st a, st a stutter. I had a, st a, st a stutter for many years. So imagine if you have a stutter, you don't have a lot of confidence. But when he stood before Pharaoh, something came upon him. And he didn't go, let, 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 let. He said, let my people go. That same anointing. That when he came before the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea had to part open. That same anointing. That same anointing is going to come upon you that your personality tonight is going to come out so that you can become visible, so that the glory of God can be released through your life. Someone say, hallelujah. Someone say, my mouth is needed. My hands are needed. Purify my heart and let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, purify my heart. 
Let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver, purify my heart and let me be as gold pure gold holy holy let's fix your eyes on him are you lord god oh my worthy is the lamb I feel the I feel the anointing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Oh, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Holy. Oh, holy, who are you, Lord God Almighty? Worthy, worthy. Here he comes. There it is. There it is. Some of you are going to get touched here now. There it is. The anointing. The anointing. He's going to breathe on you tonight. He's going to breathe on you tonight. He's going to breathe on your personality tonight. He's going to breathe on you tonight. A first love encounter with the loving God. He's madly in love with you. He's got a longing for the deepest of deep in your heart. You're going to feel an increase of the anointing. I feel the power now. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Whew. Hey, hey, hey. Every selfish motive, we lay it down. Every selfish ambition, we lay it down. Every heart's motive that is not in line, rooted in the source, driven by the source, the source of love. Whew. This year, you're going to release heaven on earth like never before the anointing is not just limited to ministry the anointing comes upon you in every facet in your business in you being a parent fire all over we don't care if we become undignified we don't care if we have to lose ourselves it's in the losing of ourselves that we find ourselves in Him. It's because we care too much about self. Self is getting out of the way. There is none. <laughs> no one else can touch my heart like you do. The desire of my heart, the fight of my life to remain pure, holy, and hungry for Him. Then you'll see revival in your life like never before. They say, you're crying again. I stopped crying until I went back into my secret place. Now I cannot help but to tell, help but to cry, help but to testify, help but to be loud, help but to make a noise without caring what the pressure of the world and the systems are saying. Be yourself, be radical, be loud.
it will always be my message. Joy belongs to the church. Extravagant, expressive, demonstration, personality coming out. <laughs> I feel like dancing. Do you feel like dancing for him? I feel like making a declaration. And then we make an altar call. And then this place is going to be lit. Dronk in the geest van God. Found myself in a place where I couldn't say certain things because they are sensitive. Just Werner, this Sunday, uh, you can preach whatever you want, but we have some visitors from the other church. So just tone it down a little bit. There is no toning down. There is no toning down when you are in love with Him. Dronk. Ongeskak dronk. Morsag dronk. In die geest van God. Nie dronk van die wijn van die wereld. Nie dronk van die geest van God. Die heilige geest. Hey. Under the influence, not of the counterfeit, the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Because we can have our little religious demonstrations. Some people get irritated when I do this with my towel. I'll do this everywhere, every hour, every way. Because I do it for Him. Hey! And if you little religious, let me step on some toes tonight. Let me get you out of that box tonight. Let me provoke you out of that deadness, that dryness. What it actually is, is a compromised position. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Sheba. Hey, Tani. Praat ek waar. Praat ek die waarheid. Is Tani white Afrikaans? Piki. I was just saying in Afrikaans. God is good. Are you with me? Yeah. Who feels the fire? Who has a hunger? I pray to release impartation in the area of compassion, of a hunger, of a hunger that will come upon you that you don't care a flip. You have to see Him. You have to taste Him. You have to go for it. Unstoppable. No limitations. No lack. The year of more is on your doorsteps. Don't let the more change who you are. Stay in Him so that He can put the more on you. But it remains Him so that He can carry you. That we can build His kingdom. Are you with me? Let me express this. The Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then it says, you'll be a witness in certain areas, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. That is territories. He says, you will receive power and be empowered when you go to certain territories to be a witness. What activates the power? Going. Preaching. Moving. Being a witness. Are you with me? So you can even say, Lord, give me territories. Even to the point where you say, Lord, give me East London. Give me Judea, Jerusalem, ends of the world. Even to the point where you can say, give me South Africa. The power gets activated in the witnessing. In the same way if you are in business. The Bible says, it is the power of God that comes upon you to create wealth. What activates the power when you go. When you witness, the power comes upon you. Now, if you're a businessman, 
it says the power comes upon you to create wealth. The Lord says He will give you nations in the Word of God. Are you asking for nations? Even to the point where you can say, Father, but I want to create wealth for territories. What activates the wealth? Giving. In the same way, when you testify and witness, power is released and you get territories as you grow. But God wants to grow you as a businessman. God wants to grow your seed. It is the power of God that comes upon you as He gives you territories. He says, seek the kingdom of God and the rest shall be added on you. So in this message, before I make the altar call, I'm going to extend the invitation. And I'm going to use this opportunity for you to say, Lord, give me nations. So if He can give you territories as you go and witness, you say, Father, as I give, will you create, give me power for bigger territories, even to the place where you say, my seed, my wealth can impact nations.